It is officially 2023 and I've been doing a lot of reflecting on 2022, looking back at my budget, how much money I made, what I was doing throughout each month. And it's been really interesting to see just how far I've come financially from just literally one year ago today. For those of you who are new around here, I recently, well, not so recently anymore, quit my nine to five engineering job and began doing gig work like pet sitting and Instacart shopping to make ends meet while I was figuring out exactly what I wanted to do to make money. Fast forward to today and I have surpassed my nine to five income from freelancing and working for myself from home and fully remotely. And I am super excited to share how my finances have changed over the past 12 months and how my net worth has changed. So we're gonna be looking exactly at how much money I had in my accounts in January of 2022 and comparing it to what I have right now as of the end of 2022. So let's just jump right into it by talking about January. January for me was a not so great month. I was fully doing cat sitting and Instacart shopping to make all of my money. I had my YouTube channel, but I was not making much from it, if anything, most months. Again, for any of you that have may not been around for a while, back in January, I was literally using my savings from my nine to five job to pay our bills. We were literally going in the hole for probably close to half of 2022. So January was no exception. But before we get into any more specifics, in January of 2022, my total net worth was $23,645. And a majority of that was coming from my retirement account. So I'm going to be giving you those numbers as well. If we don't include those retirement accounts, our net worth was $6,044. So that was at the end of the day, what we had in cash at the beginning of 2022. I made less than $1,000 in that month. 930 of that was from Rover and literally about $33 was from Instacart shopping. I was not making a lot of money. My husband was only making $1,100 that month from his job and we were just not doing well. Our expenses were very high. We were still living in DC and paying for rent there. And we ended up losing $1,200 in the month of January. And although pet sitting was a decent way to make some money in DC, when it snowed in DC, things did not go very well. <laughs> the beginning of 2022, I found myself trekking through about six inches of snow in DC, literally two days in a row while I was sick to be able to watch the cats that I had agreed to watch over the new year holiday. I literally sprained my ankle walking. I think it was like two miles there and two miles back to be able to go feed these cats. And I did it because it was my job and I needed to make money, but it really was a big eye opener for me that this is not something I could continue doing. It was not what I wanted to be doing, of course, either. And it really was just that push I needed to really try something different, which led me to doing something very interesting in February, which was to try to start up an Etsy shop again. Back when I was in college, I had done an Etsy shop and made a few hundred dollars here and there from it, but it was never something I fully pursued. So I thought, well, maybe if I give it my all, I'll actually make some good money from it. That was not the case. I made about $20 from my Etsy shop. So definitely was not worth it for me. Obviously I wasn't putting all the effort I could have in it, but it was not something I enjoyed doing. So I tried it, it didn't work and I moved on. And that's kind of something you'll see throughout this entire year is that I switched things up quite a bit to figure out ways to make money that were working for me. I continued to do Rover in February and made about $630 from it. I didn't make much more because I had to start packing because we actually moved finally out of our place in DC back down to Florida at the end of February. So not only was February kind of our last ditch effort to make any money we could before our move, it was also my husband's last month of work. So in February, he made about $1,400 from his job. I again made that 630 from Rover, the $20 from Etsy, and we ended up losing about $1,300 
after our expenses in February. So if you're thinking back to that net worth, we're at about three grand that we have left. And as you can imagine, with moving came a ton more expenses in the month of March. So heading into March, I made a little bit more money from Rover as I closed out some of the jobs I did right before I moved, as well as I took on a new job when we actually moved down to Florida and I did my first Florida job. So it went well, but I ended up only making $92.80 in the month of March. We were living with Oliver's sister and her husband, now not paying rent, but still had quite a bit of expenses because my laptop broke in March of 2022. And being someone who was planning on making a living online, I had to get a new one. So I ended up having to throw about $1,300 to $1,400 down the drain to get my new laptop, but it was literally my only option. I got the new laptop and we paid out all of our moving expenses, which was quite a lot of money after all the driving and the U-Haul trailer rentals and the movers, but we did it and we got it done. And although we made no money from Oliver's job, I made a whopping $200 $40 in the month of March, and we ended up with negative $3,200 in March, I was still happy because it was my first month that I had actually done any freelancing work. So I made my first $140 from freelancing in the month of March, which for me was so exciting because I hadn't made any money from literal freelancing since I had quit my job. I'd done Rover, I'd done Instacart, I'd done Etsy, I'd made some money on YouTube, but I had not done what I always wanted to do, which was work with actual people. So this was super exciting for me. And although it was only $140, I was ecstatic. Then April came. And again, if you haven't done the math, I can tell you myself that as of the end of March, our net worth was negative $167. So we were actually now in debt. Again, if you don't include what we had invested in the stock market from my retirement account and other investing accounts I had, obviously that's money I could have taken out, but my rule has always been that when I quit my job, I would never touch that money. I did not want to take that money out. It was literally my only thing keeping me it was the one thing that I held myself accountable for against all other odds, that money had to stay in that account. So the fact that the first month we left DC was the first month we actually went fully negative, not including those accounts, is pretty wild because thankfully now we weren't paying rent. And although that was a high expense month in March, it was pretty much the last month that we had high expenses for. So now we just had to figure out what to do from there. So now that we had some debt, which obviously I had been paying our bills on our credit card, so I was pushing those expenses forward and just hoping for the best, I was starting to get a little bit worried, but I was grateful that we were now living with family and I didn't have to stress about paying $2,000 every month on rent. But then April came and I had such an amazing month in April. In April, I made $1,500 from my business income, which included money from YouTube, my first sponsorship through YouTube, that I got paid for. It included a YouTube consulting client that I was working with one-on-one, -on -one, and it included other freelance work that I had continued to do that had started up back in March. So $1,500 was amazing news for me. And we also got our tax refund, which was about $5,000. So thankfully I had done my taxes correctly and paid my estimated payments each quarter the year before. So although I probably could have kept some of that money throughout the year, I now have this big chunk coming back to me that I was not expecting because I literally had no idea if I was doing any of it right because it was my first time ever paying my own taxes myself and it wasn't just being done by my company. So I was really happy. This was such an amazing month. We finally were back in the green. We only had that one month that things got a little bit scary and we were still living with family. So it was overall, a really big positive month where my husband was able to focus on studying for the MCAT and I just kept working and things were going great. Then came May where I had my first month of the year where I actually made over $100 from YouTube ads, which means I actually got paid out for the month prior. So April was the first month that I made over $100 and to get your payout the next month, you had to have made at least $100 the month prior. So they'll only pay you if you make at least $100. If not, then they lump two months together and pay you later. So as of May, I had my first month where I made over $100 from YouTube, which was from April, which was again, very exciting because things just felt like they were moving all in the right direction. I also started working with another new client. So this was my 
second client, so to speak, that I got through freelancing. I, funny enough, got my first Amazon affiliate payment, which was a whopping $2.04. It's the only time I've ever got paid from Amazon affiliate, but hey, $2 is $2, I'll take it. And the reason that May was probably the best month of the entire year for me was me and Oliver moved back into our own place. We moved to Orlando, we got our own apartment again, and we have been living here ever since. And it was honestly a scary leap that we were taking again. After having that month where we went in the negative and literally this tax refund being the only reason why we actually had cash again, it was really scary signing that lease when Oliver had not fully gone back to work yet. He was supposed to be transferring to his new job, but we were just waiting for that transfer to happen. And as you'll see, it took quite a bit of time for him to actually be able to get back to work. So it was kind of like a leap of faith and just trusting that his job would pan out and happen soon and my stuff would happen and continue to make me money. But yeah, we just went for it. We said, forget it. We're just going to sign the lease and we're going to make it happen because we wanted to live on our own again. We had been living with Chloe and Darren for at this point, I think like two, two and a half months. So we were ready to kind of let them have their space back, us to have our space again. I just really wanted my bed back and obviously all the really nice things that come from living by yourself and not having to stay with others. So it was just amazing that everything kind of happened the way it did and we were able to get this apartment and everything worked out, but it only got better from there. In June, I had my first pay in full client contract for $2,900. So this was a big moment and we actually had this client sign off on the contract the month prior, right as we were signing our lease to move here. So it felt like everything was just, again, aligning correctly, that it was just like a sign from God that, hey, everything's gonna be okay. You're getting this contract signed. You're gonna have money coming in. Just do it, sign the lease. It's all gonna be fine. And it was, so we signed the lease, client signed that contract, and I got that payment in early June. So that $2,900 was amazing. Definitely money that we really, really needed because in May, that month we had moved in, our income that we actually had was only about $429. So I actually didn't do a ton of work. Although I started with a new client, we didn't actually get paid yet and all of that. So I was, again, kind of scared as we were signing that lease. But in June, I made $3,264 from all of my business income, aka again, YouTube, my freelancing work, sponsorships, anything like that. So that was a great month and we ended up actually being in the negative because Oliver was not back to work yet. So May we were in the negative, I meant to mention that by $3,700, but we had been in the positive from April by $6,600. So again, we were back up, we had about $6,500 in cash. We moved into our apartment, which had a lot of cost associated again to pay first month's rent, to pay our deposit, to pay the movers, get the moving truck, all of that. So that took a big chunk of our money. And then in June, we were again, negative $450. So although we got that big payment of the 2,900, we were still negative. So I was getting a little nervous, but I was just trusting that everything was gonna work out fine. And again, I was sticking to that rule that I'd set for myself of not taking that money out of my investment account. So in July, I had my first client that I had worked with by myself. I haven't really explained that, but my first freelancing job I got was working with my friend and actually old boss from when I used to nanny, Julie, who had helped me get this client. We were working together with the client to basically do some marketing, some business development for them, and I was helping her out. So I was getting paid from her, basically helping her with the contract. And that first contract I got that was fully on my own was from that same client, but directly for me. So that was really exciting. But in July, I had my first payment with my first client that I was working with all by myself, which was a referral from Julie from one of her contacts. So I started working with them, got paid out in July, and ended up doing a ton of Rover jobs for some extra cash flow because I was, again, scared after the previous month being down $400 and Oliver's job still had not started. They had still not given him a start date. So I was starting to freak out. So in July, I ended up making only $2,800 from freelancing, Rover, 
and all of that. And I actually did quite a bit of Rover that month. I think I ended up making at least like a thousand dollars from that month was literally Rover. So I really pushed the Rover jobs again, gotten quite a few new clients here in Orlando. It actually might've been even more. I could check how much I made from Rover, but the point is I was making just a little bit of freelance money and I was making still quite a bit of Rover money to make ends meet. And I was still pretty unsure about it all. So July, we ended up being negative another $1,100. We had only 2,800 in income and our expenses were about four grand. So things were going okay, but it wasn't going great. But I did also start working with a second client on my own in July. And then in August, I started working with a third client on my own, which this client was really exciting for me because I had made this contact all by myself. It was not a referral. All of my other clients had been referrals or connections through Julie. And this was the first client I had met completely on my own and was able to get a job through that. So I had a new client that was local in Orlando and I started working with her. I also started working with my second financial coaching client. So I was making some money through that. And then the best part of the month of August was that Oliver finally started working again. So he ended up literally having to scrap the job he'd been waiting for that he was transferring from DC. He had actually initially worked for this company in Florida. He had transferred up to DC with the same company and the plan was to transfer back down to Florida, but he was having a hard time getting an actual start date from him from them and they kept pushing that out further and further and not giving us a timeline. So eventually he just applied to other jobs and ended up getting another job that ended up being so much better, literally has normal hours. He works an eight to five, which is just amazing after dealing with the ER schedule all the time. And he actually gets paid a lot more and has paid time off and benefits. So it's such an amazing job. We're so, so happy that he got this job. And although it was a few months that were really rough of him not making any money because the other job wasn't starting, it ended up being for the best because it pushed him to apply to other jobs and end up getting a better opportunity. So that was one of my favorite parts of August, but August also was the month that I had my CNN interview, which then led to September getting my largest YouTube payout I've ever gotten in one month of $267. So that was super exciting. But the month of August as a whole led to me making $2,000 in business income. So again, my freelancing Rover, et cetera, and Oliver making $1,000 from his first paycheck at his job, which still led us being in the negative by $1,665. So again, if you like adding numbers in your head, you'll know that we're right back about to that zero place that we were back in March. So we were, again, getting a little nervous, but Oliver's job had started. So it was like, okay, he's gonna start making money. I just need to pull my weight and we should be fine now. And we were, that was the last month of the year that we were negative, spoiler alert. But going into September, I started with another YouTube consulting client and I got a referral from my third client, the one I had found on my own and connected with on my own here in Orlando that led to my fourth client. And it ended up being my best month yet. I made $4,088 from all of my freelancing jobs. And at this point I had started to really cut down on the Rover work and started saying, no to more jobs because I was getting really, really busy really, really fast. And Oliver made about $2,200 in that month. So we actually made $6,200 in the month of September and ended up having a positive change in our net worth of $2,300. So that was such a great month. We made a ton of money and actually didn't spend as much as we usually did because I was again, freaking out from the previous month. And I started to feel like things were looking up and we weren't going to end up screwed and not able to pay our bills. Which brings us right into October, which if you saw one of my previous videos, October was the first month that I actually made more money than my nine to five job, which was so exciting. I just, I can't even explain how exciting it was. So in my old nine to five job, I was making about $3,500 per month post tax which ends up being about 4375 pre-tax if i'm assuming about like a 20% tax rate. So 4375 is what i used to make pre-tax and in october i made about $4400 so just over that threshold and that's actually not including the $475 i made in a rover income in the month of october. So without rover just freelancing, youtube, adsense and sponsorships i made more than my 95 job 
pre-tax, which was just, wow. I've been like loving saying that. It just feels so good. It's just like this feeling of like, okay, I made it. Things are gonna be fine from now on. But in total that month, including Rover and including my income and including Oliver's income, we made $6,700 in the month of October and ended up net positive $2,200. So again, we were in the positive and things were looking up. We finally were having a little bit of a buffer. So I was feeling very good in the month of October. I did some more work for one of my, for that first contract client I had a long time ago, that $2,900 client on an hourly basis, which was really, really great. And then kept working with all of my five continuous clients that I had. This was also the last month that I did any Rover work for the rest of the year. And well, in a sense, I finished out one job in November, but this was the last month I said yes to any Rover jobs for the rest of the year. I decided that it just didn't make sense anymore for how much I was getting paid doing Rover and the time it took and driving around and all of the coordination with Oliver and his job. It was time to stop doing Rover and fully transition to full freelancing full YouTube channel, full brand, everything. So I completely stopped Rover, which was really bittersweet for me actually. And putting my channel and putting my profile on private or away was actually kind of emotional and I got kind of worked up about it. And I think it's just because Rover was that one thing that kept things going for me whenever we really weren't making a lot of money. And it was the thing that really allowed me to quit my job and feel safe doing so because I literally quit and started making money from Rover the next month, which was just, I'm so grateful that Rover exists and that I was able to do it. And it did make so much money for us whenever we really needed it. And lastly in October, I also landed my second sponsorship and this time was a long-term sponsorship package. So I was really excited about that. And it just felt like, again, just like that positive reinforcement, like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing if this brand wants to work with me long-term. Terms, so I was super excited for that as well. Now, moving into November, we're almost at the end of the year. This is when things started to get a little bit crazy. So in November, I started with two new clients. One was an hourly client, that is actually one of my biggest clients I work with now. It's the biggest time-wise client that I have. I spend the most time with this client. And I had another contract based client that I am looking to currently sign a second contract with. So that was really exciting as well. And all of this together led to me making $4,750 in the month of November from freelancing completely on its own. Then I also made $175 from YouTube. And again, that little $36 I had left over from Rover and Oliver made about $1,900 in the month of November. So our total income for November was $6,850, which was so great. But one new thing that I did in November that I had never done before is I started working with my editor, Alice. Hi, Alice. I always like having her like throw her little face up here. So give your hello. But not only does Alice help me with editing, she also has helped me with some of my website clients, which has been so amazing. And she has been just the absolute best to work with. She has her own consulting company, which I will link Redlid Consulting down below for you guys so you can check it out. Her website is so beautiful and she has just been the best ever to work with and just so amazing. So I did have my first expense of hiring out a contractor and paying a contractor. So you'll see when we get to December that I actually had more business expenses to account for the work that I had Alice help out with in November. So in December, I had my first payment from two more clients. So now we're at, I think nine clients total that I have worked with, which is just wild. And this would have been my highest income month literally ever if I had been paid out by one of my clients, again, that largest client time-wise by the end of December, but that invoice didn't end up getting paid until the first week of January. So it's actually not in my December income statement, but if that was included because that was work done for December, I get paid out at the end of the month for that client, I would have made $6,700 from freelancing in December, which is just absolutely insane. And Oliver also got three paychecks in the month of December for $3,500 total. So that means that in the month of December, we together made 10 grand, which we have never done ever. Even when I was in my nine to five job, we were making about five grand a month. So 10 grand in one month is just 
absolutely bonkers. Like my brain can't even comprehend that. And I know that's not like a ton of money to some people, but that just sounds so insane to me. Like I can't, I just don't understand. Obviously all of my money that I've been referencing, all the income amounts have all been pre-tax. So yes, I made quote unquote 6,700 if we included that again, January invoice payment in the end of December. I actually only got paid out $2,600 besides that invoice. So that one client was like 400 something, 400, four, why is my brain not working? 4,000 something dollars. I don't know exactly, but whatever equates to 6,700. So 4,100 maybe dollars. Anyways, it was about $4,100 from that client. And, but again, that 6,700 I made was all pre-tax. So I did actually set aside my taxes and I've paid out my quarter four taxes in January, but obviously all the money I made, I had to pay taxes on, which I take out about 20% in taxes because with the amount of expenses I have and just the estimate that usually works out pretty well for my quarterly income tax payments, even though it is more than 20%, but after deductions, expenses ends up being close to 20%. So that's what I pay because I want to pay the least amount possible so I can actually make my money work for me and not have to just let the government hold it and then get it back in April. I'd rather hold it myself and do what I want with it throughout the year. So I try to stay as close as possible to the amount that I owe, but I'm really excited because next year I am planning on restructuring all of that so I can actually see what money I have from the business versus what money I'm paying myself. And I'm going to be really starting to separate all that. So stay tuned for that whole process and what that looks like, because I think it's really going to take things to the next level for me and be able to actually see how much money the business makes after taxes and after paying out contractors and any other expenses I have. But the last new expense I had in December was registering my LLC, which was about, I think, $180 and also starting to pay for a monthly virtual mailbox subscription, which allows me to get mail at a virtual address so that my address isn't just out there in the world. So after all that money and those expenses, I ended up positive about $1,050 in December. Again, that's not including that like $4,000 I made though. So if you include that, we were positive five grand in December, which is amazing. But again, pre-tax. So that's why I'm looking forward to this new system. So I actually have pretty accurate numbers of like post-tax, that'd be great. And if I didn't mention November, it was a $1,300 net positive for the month. So that is everything. The last thing I'll say is that with my YouTube channel, I also made enough throughout the entire year from May through December every month. I made more than $100 and got a YouTube payout every single month, which is awesome and something that I've always strived to be able to get. Obviously, I'd love to make more money from YouTube, but that will come one day. For now, my goal is to just always get a payout each month. If I make at least $100 every month, I'm happy. So that is my goal, although I, I didn't reach that goal because December, although I, I did reach the goal for the entire year when starting May, I just continued it. January, I'm not getting a payout because December, I only made about $80. So I did not reach it in December. So January's payout will not be coming, but that is because I was really sick in November and I got super behind and I barely posted any videos in November and December. I'm honestly surprised I even got a payout for November, but somehow I made it. So here we are, it's gonna be fine though. And I'm gonna get back into my goal of actually making that money every month and posting my videos. So we're, we're gonna do it. But to end things out and round everything out, I wanted to show you guys what my final net worth was for the end of December of 2022. So my end net worth, including all of our retirement accounts and things, which again, you have to consider that those accounts have very much dropped since January. So we are looking at a final net worth of $22,463. But if we exclude those tracking accounts and just look at our cash, our final net worth is $6,580, which actually is really ironic, 6580 didn't we start with like 6,000? 6, we started with 6,044. So we ended the year net positive $500 in cash. So that's super exciting. Although our retirement accounts did seem to go down, we ended positive in cash. So I'm happy. And if we included that uh, invoice payment I got in January, we ended up like, you know, $4,500 positive. So, but again, I'm looking month to month. So we ended positive $500 for the entire year, which considering all the crazy moving, getting a new computer, having months where we made no money, my husband not even working for 
literally March, April, May, June, July, five months of the year, Oliver didn't work and we somehow ended positive $500. Like I will take it. I will gladly take that. I'm really happy that we somehow ended in the green and yeah, that's literally it. Those are my uh, updates for the year and basically just a full financial business income update. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was interesting to see all of the different work I did. I know I could have gone into more detail about each of the clients, but I was trying to keep it focused on the money side and the finances and I'd be happy to talk more about what my different client work looks like and what I'm doing, but I am starting to really niche down into what I want to be doing and that is a big goal of mine for 2023 is to get really clear on my business goals and get things super consistent with my business. So stay tuned if you want to watch me grow and build out this business and just see my journey of working for myself and figuring all this out on my own because I genuinely have no clue what I'm doing, but I do have resources and connections that have really helped me and mentored me through all this. But I'm super pumped for what this year is gonna bring and hopefully we have a better posit net positive than $500 in cash increase throughout the entire year of 2023. But I will be talking about my financial goals in another video, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me all through 2022. I appreciate all of you so much. And if it wasn't for you guys, I would not be net positive because I made more than $500 on YouTube in 2022. I made about a thousand probably dollars, maybe some over a thousand probably, maybe, I don't know. How much money do we make from YouTube this year? Let's do a quick check. I made about $1,500 from YouTube AdSense in the past year. That's pretty amazing. That paid for my laptop. So I will take that. And that is all thanks to you guys. Again, I would not be net positive. I'd be in the negative if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks for watching and supporting. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.